Namaste. Now, technically, I'm on retreat, but I wanted to make this video to record some insights that may get lost later on if I go deeper into the silence. And they have to do with the practice of Jnana Yoga. Looking at our good old chart, we see that there are four states of consciousness. Jagrat, Svapna, Sushupti, and Turiya. And there are four views, darshans, associated with them. Dvaitavada, Vishishta, Dvaitavada, Vivartavada, and Ajatavada, respectively. And similarly, there are four yogas, Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga, and Jnana Yoga. Now, we've talked quite a bit about the practice of the different yogas, and we've talked somewhat about the theory of Jnana Yoga, the philosophy, but we haven't talked much about the actual practice, and that is because it's not for everybody. Despite what some commercially motivated teachers might tell you, it's not for everybody. And there's a wonderful verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam that even the best of the brahmanas is one out of thousands of thousands of men. But even such a one who is complete in knowledge of scriptures and sacrifice and so on, doesn't really understand the highest truth, liberation. And even, even out of thousands of people who do understand the truth of liberation, only one may be found who can actually practice it. And of thousands and thousands of those who can actually practice liberation, only one may understand it in truth. So this understanding or realization, jnana, is very, very rare. And only people with the proper qualification can attain it. Now, later on in this series, we're going to discuss the qualifications. But right now, what I want to do is record some of the insights having to do with the practice. So, instead of our usual view of these four states of consciousness and yogas, I want to focus on the practices that are associated with them. Now, the practice of jnana yoga is not done in isolation from the other yogas. Think of jnana yoga as the peak of a mountain. And because of that, it requires the rest of the mountain as a foundation to support it. So just because one has become qualified and is able to practice jnana yoga doesn't mean that he stops the practice or that he can skip the practice of the other yogas. So let's take a look at these four yogas and how they all support the practice of jnana yoga. First, of course, there's karma yoga. What is karma yoga? Acceptance of guru, that means initiation. Study of the shastra, the scriptures, under the guru's direction. Renunciation of prohibited sense pleasures, beginning with eating meat and fish and all kinds of nonsense, liquor and so on and so on. Performance of regulated sacrifice. This means deity worship, temple worship. Practice of the four preliminary qualifications. And we're going to get into a detailed description of that 
later on in this series, so I won't describe it now. But karma yoga also includes economic development, charitable donations, and maintenance of health. Without economic development, one is always going to be in anxiety about how am I going to live? Where am I going to stay? And may have to join some organization, some welfare group or some spiritual group where there's always anxiety about the management and the leadership and having to be subordinate to others. And these are all very bad for one's yoga practice. Therefore, it's best to be economically independent to have one's own source of passive income that does not require any work, but gives adequate resources for living. And then one should use some portion of one's income for regular charitable donations. And the best of these is feeding the sadhus, taking care of the sadhus, taking care of the guru, especially in his old age, and so on like that. And then finally, maintenance of one's own health. If you're not in good health, you can't practice yoga. Once you've attained and realized everything, then the state of health doesn't matter. But in the stage of sadhana, it's supremely important. Every morning after I finish my morning meditations, I go out to the beach and I walk and do hatha yoga and swim and get some sun. A study just came out that daily sun exposure of 30 minutes or more has health benefits comparable to those of quitting smoking. So, of course, there's just like there's no yoga without uh, quitting smoking and other nasty habits. There's no yoga without getting daily outdoor exercise and eating properly. Take care of your health. Now, if you do all of these things and you maintain it for some time, then what will happen is that spontaneously bhakti yoga will arise. Bhakti yoga means spontaneous ecstatic love of one's chosen Ishtadevata, the deity or form of God to which one is devoted, the guru and the, the devotees, development of that devotion and the commitment to it, the commitment to spiritual life and complete renunciation of material life. Why do we chase after material life, material relationships, and so on? It's because we feel emotionally incomplete, isn't it? But when one develops bhakti yoga, or I should say, when one receives the blessing of bhakti yoga, because it, it's not something you can do, it's something that happens by long, steady performance of karma yoga, then this ecstatic love satisfies all our emotional needs. We don't anymore need to have friendships and lovers and all these relationships that cause so many complications and problems in our lives but we can remain emotionally self-sufficient and independent because all of our emotional needs are satisfied by love of God. And now this doesn't mean that we quit doing karma yoga. No. Just like when you build the second floor of a house, doesn't mean that you take, you get rid of the first floor. <laughs> no, the first floor is needed to support the second floor. So in the same way, karma yoga practice is needed to support bhakti yoga practice. And we see that indeed, those who have realized bhakti become even better karma yogis, because now they're motivated by love.
after bhakti yoga has been practiced and has been developed into a deep commitment to spiritual life, then what happens? Raja yoga or meditation develops. And again, this is not something you do. It's something that happens to you. It's a blessing. You automatically gain the urge to meditate. You almost can't stop yourself. So what is meditation about? Removal of mental modifications. Upadis, which means covering. Vritti, which means mental modifications or in other words, the assumption of form by consciousness, and sankara, which means uh, fabrications, preparations, mental structures, systems, and so on. All of these mental constructs, all of these thoughts are to be put away. And of course, the ego, <laughs> and the sense of possession and enjoyment of external objects and so on. Actually, that should, that should happen already by this stage. But this stage of Raja Yoga is about systematically removing the vasanas, which means the habitual thought patterns, the desires, the coverings, and the fabrications of the mind until the mind is pure and clean. And this is realization of shunyata, emptiness. And so then what happens? Then and only then we become qualified to perform jnana yoga. And what is jnana yoga? It means inspiration of the vision of Brahman, the self, and its development. This again is not something you can do. It's not something you can get by reading books. But after sufficient practice of Raja Yoga, I mean years, maybe decades, one is given the blessing of the vision of Brahman. This happened to me in 1984. And then one has to develop that vision. The vision itself is just a seed. The seed has to be watered and cultivated and protected and nourished. See, it's not simply that one day the guru zaps you and then you're enlightened. It's not that simple. It's not that easy. When you get the seed of the vision of Brahman, the vision of the self, then you have to develop it. And the means to develop it is called vichara, atma vichara or inquiry into the self. And that is going to be the principal subject of this whole series. So, but first of all, you have to get that inspiration. And that is received or that you've become eligible for that by practice of bhakti yoga, karma yoga, and raja yoga. That's the foundation. And jnana yoga is the crown, the jewel, the pearl of great price, the final stage of self-realization. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.